Thanks for joining me today as we create this beautiful Mother's Day gift that starts out very generic and turns into this beautiful personalized gift that will help them keep their cards and remember special dates. I am Jen and you are with me on my Gentastic journey. So today we have this beautiful book and I bought several of them for my Mother's Day gifts and we're going to take this kind of generic book where people can keep their cards and remember birthdays and things along those lines and we're going to use our card crafting creativity and we're going to make it very personalized and just prettier to look at but this book in general is really nice. I got it off of Amazon fairly inexpensive. We're just going to create the outside and make it look pretty and personalized and then we're going to work on the inside. So for the outside I start to think about what are some of the things I want to add to the front to make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, in the end I end up printing this because I couldn't find any specific lettering that I liked for my mother's name. So I'm going to die cut this out with this pretty shape that is similar to the shape on the original one. So I just cut it up a little bit so it fits on my die cutting machine. This is an Off Nova die cutting machine. And so this will put perfectly. The colors matched really nicely. And then I'm going to try and sort through some of my different kind of stickers and embellishments that I think could make this card just look a little bit more exciting. I start out with the golds. Even though there's not a lot of gold in it, they're more cool colors. So I wasn't sure that I would like the gold. I don't really have any silver of these type of cutouts and stickers. So I'm just playing around and seeing what it is I might like to do to just kind of jazz this up a little bit. Then I pull out some of these more paper ones. They're not metallic necessarily. They're just lightweight cardboard cutouts. I kind of got a hodgepodge at this point, but just so you guys can see my thought process and all the different things that you might want to do if you were to pick up a gift of something like this. I will say that on Amazon they have several different versions of this same book. They had a black and white one. They had one with different colors. So this one was the most plain and I picked this one because I felt like I could do a lot with it if I wanted to do a lot on the inside especially and also on this outside area. So I'm just literally pulling out everything I have and kind of laying it around so that I could see what it is I might want to do. I do like the green parts quite a bit, making a little bit of a frame around that frame. Pinks really don't match. The off-white really doesn't match either because it's got more of those, again, cool colors. I'm still unhappy with what I have, so I pull out my black and white ones, which I really didn't think was going to work because the white on here is kind of an off-white and the white cutouts that I have have a sheen to them. They're kind of shimmery. But then I put the black on here and I kind of liked that concept because I could always bring in some embellishments or some Nuvo drops or something along those lines and pops of color that are black. So any of those kinds of things could tie in some of this black some of these black cutouts. Again, I have three of these that I plan on doing. I was trying to look for stuff too that I had enough for me to do three with. Then I'm just going to put some tape on the back of this. Because it's a book and this is going to be opened and closed and opened and closed, I really put a lot of adhesive on the back. And I really like this adhesive, but I literally put it all over. So that's not going to move. It's not going to peel off. And then, as you know, I liked the green. So I'm going to leave the green on here and then place some of the black around it as well. Again, just making sure I have, know what I'm doing and have everything in place and then I'm going to start gluing things. So I use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. You all know that I really like this glue. I have been branching out and trying some other glues but I still love the nozzle on this glue bottle and it never clogs on me at all. I just really like that nozzle is, is the biggest thing. It dries a little fast for my preference. I can't move things around for too terribly long, but you do have a second or two as long as you have enough glue. If you have a very little amount of glue, it's really not going to move. This is actually a part two to a two-part series because I created all the flat cards that are going to go on the inside of this beautiful book, and I will link that above as well so you can see that video, and it'll also be the next video in this playlist at the end of the video on YouTube. Then here I bring out my pops of color, and I kind of just brought all the ones I have that I thought might match, so some purples and pinks. And I'm just going to start to put some pops of color on the flowers, just so that they no longer look just like an outline. 
And I really like pops of color because you can make it a little bit flatter. Uh, you can make it a little bit smaller, so it's not going to be... I was afraid to use like bead embellishments or sequins embellishments because I thought they, those might pop off. And then as you can see here, I'm kind of using them to color in some of the flowers on that greenery. So just lots of versatility you have with pops of color or other types of, of this type of media. And I keep slamming this on the desk because it flattens those dots quite a bit. So if you ever get dots and they look really pointy, you just either tap on the back of your project, because this is a book, I'm slamming it down, but you do that and it, it just really helps those drops to kind of, and the more you do it, the flatter they get. Okay, so now we're on the inside of the book. And this again is where I really wanted to create some fun. So in the January, there it's got one through 31. There's a couple pockets there. On the, on the left hand pocket, I plan to put some cards that are not really birthdays, and that way the person could have some congratulations, happy anniversary, whatever those might be. Whereas in the pockets that are designated for each month, I plan on putting birthday cards and just like two or three birthday cards. And again, we created those birthday cards. They're nice and flat, so they'll be easy for people to mail, people that aren't used to making cards. Uh, don't realize that sometimes our cards with all those embellishments and dimensions on them are hard to mail sometimes. So I did put a sheet in between just in case some of that ink didn't dry. I'm using my Stampin' Up! ink pads. I'm just trying to put some excitement on each month. So as an example, anytime a month has a special date in it or a holiday in it, I kind of go with that and then decorate for that holiday. So February happens to have Valentine's Day fall on it. It's also my birthday, so it's a favorite of mine. I have five million stamps for Valentine's Day as a result. So just look, making it look very Valentine's-ish. And then for March, I was going to do some spring stuff, but then I realized that I would be missing out then on the whole Happy St. Patrick's Day sentiments and things. But I do put uh, a happy spring at the bottom, a St. Patrick's Day as well, and then just a few shamrocks in there as well to make it a little bit fun. And I'm trying to stay away too much from those lines because those lines are intended to be people's birthdays that fall on those dates. And I don't think that first page was quite dry, so I'm going to bring in some tissues to kind of just make sure that those inks don't get on top of each other in case they aren't quite dry. So for April and May, we're going to focus a little bit on Easter for April. And then I have a cute little bunny that's sitting on a log a little bit. So I don't mind going too much on those lines as long as they're kind of on the outer side or if I'm just using a light outline. And here I just use some colored pencils because those are nice and light. Because I'm just using Stampin' Up! ink, I didn't want to have to worry about anything bleeding onto each other or anything like that. And I also was afraid that maybe some markers might show on the other side on the other page. When in doubt, I use colored pencils because they're not going to go anywhere and it's just nice and light so if somebody needs to write a long name on the 1st of April then they can go right over that. And then I just fill in the little egg and all the little decor on that Easter sentiment as well. So that's April done. May is Mother's Day so we're going to create a little Mother's Day page in tribute for that. Put a few hearts on here. This is the beauty of some of the crafting that we do. We can just jazz things up that are a little plain. For June, I dedicated that page to Father's Day. I have a Stampin' Up! stamp set that has like a father, son and daughter, or kids and fathers in it. And I really love that stamp set. Even though it's kind of a bigger one, I do again think that people can write names right over that. So not a problem. So just using my colored pencils to make those stand out a little bit more but very lightly coloring. I did the speed this up quite a bit, but it's still taking a little bit of time to color in all those different areas. I got this idea actually from my mother-in-law who was talking to me about how hard it is to remember everybody's birthdays and occasionally she'd be like, hey, can you send me the birthdays again of all the kids and grandkids and great grandkids? I thought this just would be such a great idea and I apologize that this is pulsing. I think that I'm about to run out of battery and so it pulsed for a second there to let me know. For 4th of July, I don't really have necessarily sentiments, but I just used some star-shaped stamps and we're just going to make this red white and blue for 4th of July. Those of you in the United States, one of my favorite holidays. So I should have more stamps around 4th of July. I just don't usually send out 
cards for 4th of July, but I might need to. It's always good to use your stamps and your cards, and people love to get cards. Even though some people say it's kind of a, a lost art and people really aren't into cards anymore, I do think people enjoy it. All right, so we're on to August. And so August and September for me, I was like, hmm, what am I going to do? So um, just put a little frog stamp on the August and September. I was like, it, that says every season brings a sense of wonder. And then when I thought of September, I thought of bumblebees because uh, they're typically annoying in the Midwest at about September. So those are some little bees. For October, I decided to pull in Happy Halloween stuff and some fall that says Happy Fall, y'all. And then for November, I did Happy Thanksgiving. And then for our last month for December, I did decide to do some Christmas stuff for this one. Really pretty wavy stamp from for Christmas. And then I had this pretty tree that I thought might look nice on there. And then just using a little snowflake to add a little bit of green into this page. And then next what we're going to need to do is then fill this book up. First, let's make sure everything's nice and dry. And then I also double checked to make sure there wasn't anyone I needed to go back and recolor or color in or just add something if I didn't think it was kind of fun enough. <laughs> we want this to be kind of fun and pretty. I don't know if that's a beaver or what that is, but it looked fall-ish to me. <laughs> so a good November one. And then I added a little leaf here. Uh, I guess I didn't go into my stash of leaves, but I just wrote one in and then colored it in a little bit. Added a little green to the other one. Since my Thanksgiving stamp was brown. <laughs> Coloring in my little frog friend. I've always had a love of frogs. And this guy, the stamp set has a lot of really fun frogs in it. And the little lily pad that goes with him. And then on the bees side, I just add some, uh, it doesn't look like it, but it's black, some black stripes for the bees. And I think I put a couple of little hearts in here just to give it, to tie in all that color. And then... My green is really green, so I just <laughs> added a little bit more with a, with some grass. And then I put a little brown around his eyes and lips and his toes. Brown toenails on a frog. I'm not sure if that's quite correct, but I like the way it turned out. And then just shading a little bit of this lily pad. And everything else looks pretty good. As I sat here, I was like, hmm, could have done a little bit more on Happy New Year's. So I did draw in a few silver stars, and that's the way it looks. So a little quick flip through before we fill this. And I really like the way that is. It looks a lot better in person. A lot of pops of color really came out nice. So I made a whole bunch of cards. As I mentioned, I'll link that above here. And I also had some cards that I had purchased a while ago that were like, you know, grab and go kind of cards. And so there's a good mix because not everybody wants to send out homemade cards, just being sensitive to that. So there's a few that are made by some machine and then there's some that are handmade by me. More, I think, made by me than, than not. But, uh, and I, want to kind of, I wanted to have two or three in each month. And then in this packet, as I mentioned before, just I, in that front flap, I had like congrats and happy anniversary. Then I have some male kind of cards, masculine cards, I should call them. I threw those in at the back too. And I'm just trying to make sure each month has the, like a three cards or so. So it's a pretty good sized book once you get all these cards in there. Uh, so I didn't want to add too much more. I was afraid I would bust the book, but uh, it's actually pretty well made and I think it came out really nice. So just a quick walkthrough of all the different cards. So I have some congrats, I've got a get well in there, I've got a happy anniversary, just all the different pages. So I think it came out really pretty and I think that it's a functional and fun and, you know, homemade gifts are always a good thing, I think. And so I think that the, my mothers and mother-in-law will appreciate it. So thanks for joining me today as we created these beautiful gifts. I hope they inspired you and maybe you can use this because mothers can be so hard to buy for. If you would, please subscribe to my channel. It certainly helps me out as I'm a newer channel. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I have a new video and I have two videos per week. From there, if you enjoyed this content, give me a like and I will see you in the next video.